Now, what we're going to do is uh, try to cover the earlier sections of the class. Um, you know, a lot of the exam has conceptual material to test your basic knowledge of government to the So what that, you know, a lot of it is that, so let's just go over some of that stuff now, okay? So you should be, but item number one, you should be familiar with the differences between governmental and not for profit organizations, right? So it's different purpose, their finance differently, right? And management, in the case of government, has a duty to the taxpayer. In the case of a for profit organization, they have a duty to the shareholder, right? And uh, we talked about the two types of government that we see. One is a general purpose, and the other one is special purpose, right? And what I'll do is I'll go through some of the more, and then obviously not-for-profit organizations. I'm not really going to deal with this at any length here because we're going to be covering this in a separate area after we finish government, uh, governmental accounting itself, the first section of it. Okay. But we'll talk a little bit about this. Uh, so this is an important slide because this gives you the distinction. Resource providers do not expect to receive proportional benefits. There is a lack of profit motive. There is an absence of ownership rights. That's the primary distinction that's made. Uh, and more importantly, the government has the power to do what? Tax. Right. And those taxes show up where in the as general revenue, right? Now this is an important slide too, because this talks about the role of FASB, GASB, and FASA. So tell me of these organizations. Which one is concerned with both internal and external reporting? Yep, FASA. And do you see the difference between FASB and GASB? FASB is considered, uh, uh, is involved with non-governmental, not-for-profit, and GASB is governmental, not-for-profit, right? So it's important to know that, right? So GASB is concerned with external financial. We talked about why government financial reporting is different because it does what? It has the focus is on accountability or stewardship. Accountability is a very important concept in government accounting because taxpayers need to know that you're spending their money properly. Okay. And how do we do that? By comparing our financial results with a budget. So let me ask you a question. Of the governmental funds we know, which funds can have their own budget? Which two funds usually tend to have a budget? One is the general fund, right? Yeah. And what's the second fund? Yes, uh, no, no, just governmental funds. So you're the so it's the general fund and the special revenue fund, right? They have they usually operate under a budget. Word is very important because accountability is the cornerstone of all financial reporting in government. And interperiod equity is an important concept within it. And you should know what the meaning of interperiod equity is, right? Yeah. It deals with the issue of whether your current revenue can support or support your current year expenditure. 
you won't postpone your obligations to future years. That's an important exam, right? So make sure you understand the content of what indicated equity. Again, accountability is also the foundation of federal government financial reporting. Notice, as he said earlier, it's both what? Internal and external. What you will see is, in the federal government, there is also an assessment of the operating performance. Does GAVI deal with operating performance? In those financial statements, were there any uh, issues dealing with performance data? No, nothing, right? In fact, they tried to do it and people weren't very happy with it. And here, not for profit deal with resource allocation decisions. So the bottom line is you should know the objectives of financial reporting for federal government, for state and local government, and not for profit. You should know what the objectives of financial reporting are for each one of those two. This is the minimum requirement for general purpose procurement financial reporting. This is what your report should contain as a minimum. Most entities do more than this by issuing a capital, a comprehensive financial report, by adding more things. So what kind of things do they add to this to make it a capital? They usually have something like an introductory section, like in a statistical section, for instance, right? So you should be familiar with the MDNA. What are the government-wide financial statements that you know? Statement of net position and what statement of activity. Those are your government-wide statements. What are the fund financial statements? Statement of Revenue, expenditures, and changes in fund balance, and balance sheet. Okay, those are the two fund financial statements. And notes to the finance. Where does the budget budgetary schedule go? It can either be up here or it can go as part of the RSI, which is the required supplementary information. So really, the governmental funds kind of contain these three schedules, three statements. There's a budgetary statement, there's a statement of revenue expenditures and changes in fund balance, and the balance sheet. So you should know the name of these two things, as well as the government wide statement. Yeah. Can you repeat the, fund, the government fund, the wide financial statement contains the two things that it contains? The what? The government wide. The government-wide financial statements are the statement of activity and the statement of net position. Yeah. Got to know the name of these statements. And we're going to actually go into these when we go to Chapter 9, where you actually see how to build it. Okay? We don't have income statement and balance sheet. We have balance sheet and something else in each one of them. So let's take a look at the government-wide financial statement. What is their focus on? Operational accountability. Whether the government has used its resources efficiently and effectively in meeting service objectives. And you say, but wait a minute, you just said governments didn't do that. Well, they're trying to establish it, but in order to do that, you have to have what? Performance measures, which governments are not required to report. So on the one hand, it talks about operational accountability, but this is what's needed to do that. And remember, what does it say for the government as a whole? What's the government as a whole contain? Governmental activities, what else? Decidery funds, 
producers are producing part of the WY financial statement? No. Just remember that. Fiduciary funds are not part of the government-wide statement. They're just part of what? You have the governmental activities and the societal. And of course, focus on flow of economic resources, recognized on an accrual basis for more dependent governments. And you should also know what the definition of the plan is. Funds focus on the flow of current financial resources. These are the governmental funds. What are the governmental funds that you know now? General funds. General funds. service. Capital projects. Special revenue funds and permanent funds. Do you have to have all of them? No. Which is the one you have to have? General funds. In order to have a fund, what must it meet to show as a, a, in its own separate column? It has to be a major fund. And you know what the rules are for major funds, right? Yeah. 10 plus the 5% rule, right? Yeah. <laughs> so in order to, if you are the CFO of an organization which had a fund which didn't meet that criteria, can you still show that as a made as a as a fund in a separate column? Of course. Yes, you could. But does Gatsby like that? No. no. They don't want you to they want you to do what? Report on major funds. But they don't prevent you from reporting. They just don't want people to list ten funds across. They want so if something's not major, where does it end up? Other government funds. So, governmental fund financial statements are used in assessing fiscal accountability through the budget, and they are recognized on a modified accrual basis. So, uh, let me ask you a question. If I had property taxes, which were coming due 60 days after the end of the year, so this is 2012, I'm recognizing my property taxes this year. Part of it comes due within 60 days after the end of the year. Can I recognize them under the modified accrual basis? Yeah. Yeah. What if it were 90 days? No. Could I recognize it if it were 90 days in the government-wide statements, in the governmental activity? Tougher question. Full accrual yeah. basis doesn't stop you from doing it. You can recognize it. Because it's full accrual basis, right? But under modified accrual basis, what are you confined to? 60 days, yeah. And these are the other fund categories, proprietary fund and fiduciary fund, and they both follow the full accrual basis. This is what I was speaking about, the difference between the minimum reporting requirement uh, and the comprehensive annual financial report. We have introductory section and statistics section. In the introductory section, this is what we have. Title page, content page, letter of transmittal, and other things describe the report. Hopefully those of you who looked at the CAFR have already seen some of this. Financial section has the auditor report, the MDNA, the basic financial statement, the RSI, which is the budgetary schedule, and combining an individual fund statement with schedule. This is in the capital. Anyone know what that means, combining an individual fund statement with schedule? You know what they do? Remember, I told you if anything doesn't meet the major fund criteria, where does it go into? Sure. The other government. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't you want to know what's in that other governmental fund category? This breaks it down into those individual items. Yeah.
MDNA provides a brief objective, a narrative uh, of management's analysis that can tell you if the revenue went up or down, the reason why it happened, does it over a two year time frame or more, it tells you whether the expenditures came up, went up or down, what the reason was, it tells you how the economic conditions are, if they're good or bad. If you look at the state of New Jersey, MDNA, that will give you that point. So these are your basic financial statements, government-wide financial statements and the fund financial statements, what we talked about. And then finally, the statistical section. These are your table and chart. How many years did I say normally you present information for? About 10 years. This is the federal government financial reporting. Um, we give you a couple of things. Plain language citizens guide. Do we have that required by GASB? Did you see that in the other chapter? No. So that's something different. It looks like the federal report looks a little better, doesn't it? Has something which we don't have. Supplementary information. Uh, same language citizens guide and then a performance accountability report. So that's the federal agency. I won't really go too much into this because we're not covering this topic, the federal uh, financial reporting. Just a quick introduction, not for profit. Who are nonprofits accountable? People who give them money, right? Mm -hmm. Donors, regulators, such as the Internal Revenue Service, making sure that they don't do something they're not supposed to, right? And these are the statements that are required. Notice. They have statement of cash flow, which we don't have in what? Government financial statements, except in the societal part. And then they have something else called statement of functional expense. And we'll look at all of this at the very end of this course. And we talked about briefly about this. Again, as I said, I won't go too much into this about how it's different uh, from what we have seen so far into these three categories. Uh, you have to separate program expenses from supporting expenses, like administrative expenses. So let's try to do a quick review again. So what did we talk about? We talked about the government, the federal government, and not for profit. You should know who does, who follows whose requirements. GASB is responsible for what? The government. government, state, local government, and governmental nonprofit. SASB is responsible for all the for profit plus what? Gov non governmental nonprofit. And SASAP is responsible for all the federal, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, and then we talked about the different financial states. All right, let's go into go to a few of these. As I said, I keep on bringing this current resource and current financial uh, economic resource and financial resource model. Very, very important to know that. Uh, and it's important to know that because that's how our statements are prepared. Um, so for instance, these two bases of accounting, modified accrual basis and accrual basis of accounting, give us different results when comparing the two sets of financial statements. So let's see, we have two sets, the government-wide financial statements, which are then true, 
and the fund financial statements, we already just turned to review, I already talked about this. Uh, let's take a look at a transaction or two. Uh, what's uh, unique about internal service? Well, one thing was some of us got confused by that, the internal service, right? Because it seemed like they were part of the proprietary funds, but we integrated them into the government-wide. And we'll deal with that. So one thing I want you to remember is what the definition of the fund is. That they stop balancing, set up accounts, segregate financial resources, liabilities. Conceptually, obviously, it doesn't, but it has its own set of books and statements, meaning its own charge account. Like own, your own little sub, you know, sub for, for an organization. Or at least, and you should know what the different types of governmental funds are. These are the ones for the proprietary funds and then the private funds. So you should be aware of all of these 11 funds that exist between the three types. Any questions so far? Hang in there. We'll get to it. Special revenue funds. So does a special revenue fund usually have a budget? Yeah. yeah. Just like a general fund, right? Does it follow the same accounting process as a general fund? Yes. Yeah. Does it use encumbrance accounting? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All governmental funds use what? Encumbrance. So we talk about debt service fund, which is basically used to account for principal and interest on long-term liabilities. You know, in some ways, we review this, we review the good. In some ways, they're not very good. Because when you look at it, some of you scratch your head and say, geez, yeah. I should have known this. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. But as I said to you, um, you know, while you it's a, while I think about it now, as you take the exam, as you saw while we are answering the uh, multiple choice, first of all, make sure you review all the multiple choice questions. Go through them once more. Mm -hmm. But secondly, when you look at the question, don't be in a hurry to answer the question. I'm not asking you to second guess. Read it yourself. You've got a lot of time to do this exam. Read the question carefully. And what happens is a lot of the time you look at it and you say, I don't even, I know the answer. Okay? So read the question carefully because as you found out with uh, when we were looking at the multiple choice, just one word. Like the difference between how would you report this in the general fund or governmental activity? That might not fit. And there are two separate answers all together. So just be careful as you go through this. Um, permanent funds, what's the difference between permanent funds and agency funds? The difference is for a public purpose. And what is it for agency funds? For a private fund. Again, we keep on talking about this. So what's an item which will never show up in the general fund chart of account? What's a terminology that will never show up? Expense. Expense will never show up what? There's only one which is called what? Expenditure, right? But never expense. The expenditure is the cost of the item, and expense is the amount of the cost used up or consumed during the period. So where would you find the expense? You'll find the expense in the governmental activities or the government-wide And capital assets and long-term liabilities, for that reason, are not recorded in the government. Remember the word governmental fund. 
And, you know, when you look at the statement by itself, it looks so ridiculous. How could you not record liabilities and assets? But what it doesn't say in the governmental fund. I'm not going to uh, go much into this, actually not at all into the reconciliation. This is going to go into this in Chapter 9. It's much a more complicated area. You really need to know the rest of it before we get to this. So you can kind of uh, skip this one. Okay. Common transactions. When the government borrows money, in the general fund, you debit what? Cash and other financing sources, credit, right? This is what in the general fund. What would it be in the governmental activities, government wide? Cash and no state. You should know this, right? The two classic transactions one is borrowing money, and two, purchasing an asset. Let's take a look at the next one, which is purchasing an asset. Expenditure capital outlay. Not equipment or any of that, right? But under the governmental activities of what? Building. Everybody should know this, right? And internal service fund, you should know what is used for, what is used to provide services to other departments. Enterprise fund, where the purpose is to recover the cost of operating it. Do you find depreciation expense in the enterprise fund? In the enterprise fund, did you have depreciation expense? Okay, first of all, yeah. Oh. Enterprise fund operates like a business, right? <laughs> do, do businesses report depreciation? Yeah. Do you find depreciation in the governmental? No. Because what happens when you buy the asset? Yeah. We don't, but we do what? Debit expenditure, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. But the depreciation is for uh, no, it's because proprietary and fiduciary funds follow the full approval rate. Fiduciary funds generally don't have equipment. 99% of what? Financial, financial assets. Yeah. Yeah, pension assets. And this is what depreciation is reported in the proprietary. The good thing about proprietary fund is you have to read it. Why? Anybody says to you proprietary fund, what do you think about? Business accounting. Everything that's applicable to business accounting is what? Applicable to proprietary. The only one exception is that internal service fund because of the way we deal with it, financial reporting. And the name of one of the statements is not, we don't call it income statement. What do we call it? Statement of revenue, expenses, right? And changes in net position. Expenses are recorded, not expenditures. And these are the statements of it. Agency funds, fiduciary funds, I won't go through all of these, but the important thing to remember here is do agency funds have fund equity, fund balance? No. Do, do fiduciary funds have fund no. equity? No, why? Because they have only two things, which is what? Assets, Assets and? So they have something, and what do they? They owe it to somebody else, right? So asset equals liability. And that's why you don't have statement of revenue and expenses. What do you have? Additions and deductions, right? Statement of changes in fiduciary net assets, or net position, net assets, I should say more. So I'm not going to go through fiduciary fund, as I said, you can uh, Any 
Any questions on this so far? Okay, so we talked about the major funds, right? We know what major and non-major funds are, right? And general fund is always a major fund. What's another name for a general fund? Some people call it current fund. Right? If you see the word current, don't get confused. But you should remember this criteria for what comprises a major fund. What comprises that you should know. So far, everybody's clear as to assets and liabilities and how they're reported. And this is stuff that we've gone over already. Assets are always reported at what? Yes, sir. What if it's donated assets? At its fair value. So somebody has a piece of equipment which they want to donate. The book value of that piece of equipment is $400,000. They donate it to you. The equipment's fair value is only 300000 Which one would you pick? The lower one. You would pick always the fair market value. Never the book value of the other person who's giving it to you or she's giving it. Yeah. If the book value is, uh, if you like the fair value, record the book value of the fair value. You will record the fair value, fair market value. Even though book value is less than fair value? Well, it, you know, yeah, it doesn't matter because you're, that's what you're going to look at. I gave you a poor example, which was equipment, but it's usually, you know, most people don't track the book value because they're, the asset they're giving, unless it's used in a business, they don't calculate book value. You know? Yeah. See, what you're looking at is the rules for reporting uh, marketable security, which is what lower off cost are mar market value. Yeah. Hang in there. So this is one thing you should not do. The basis of accounting for each one of the funds and the statements. Any questions on chapter two? Okay, what we'll do is, instead of trying to go through this Let's use the next 15 minutes just to go over some of the more fun because we can. So the let's talk about. We'll go a little bit. Um, some of the more important areas. We went to the reporting the property tax levy, right? Yeah. So you know that that's an area that you shouldn't. Okay. What are some of the other things we talked about? One of the other areas we spoke about was the different types of revenues which a government can get, right? So you should, and uh, those revenues are classified in what category? Program revenues and general. and general revenue. You should know which one is what. Which is program revenue and which is general revenue. And you should know which revenue is recognized when. So some revenues are recognized on a cash basis, and some revenues are recognized when you bill people, right? So you should understand that as to how you record them in your book. Another piece we talked about was uh, exchange transactions. Remember? What do exchange transactions involve? An exchange of value, right? And what are non-exchange transactions? One where you don't. Give me an example of non-exchange revenue. No, between you and the outside world. Tax, she said taxes, okay? Where property tax, for instance, okay? Remember the four categories of classification 
of non-exchange transactions we talked about. Maybe I should um, please forgive me as I go through this quickly. Um, was it in chapter four? Exchange transactions. Well, let's just run through some of this. This is the uh, the piece that I just talked about. Program revenue, right? Charges for services, operating grants and contributions. You should know what are program revenues and what are general revenues. What's the format of the statement of activity? Which is what? Expenses minus program revenue. Let me get to the, uh, oh, you know the difference between extraordinary items and special items, right? What's the difference? Management control and the other one has to be what? Yeah, in, in treatment and not in management control. Important terms to keep in mind. Talk about the general fund. I'm just going to go through this quickly. Uh, budgetary accounts. What do you do with budgetary accounts at the end of the year? What do budgetary accounts have uh, as a relationship with real accounts? They always have what balances? Opposite balance, right? Learn to the difference between revenue and other financing sources and expenditures and other financing sources. Okay, and these are examples. So learn to know when to use a revenue account as to other financing sources. So what's the standard uh, general entry to record a budget? What happens when you record a budget? What's the standard general entry? These are the taxes that you get. Think about, I'm going to go through this. By the way, I'm not going to ask you to do anything which requires a calculator. So it means like there might be some things which I might not of course, all of you are so brilliant, you can just add it right there on the piece of paper, right? <laughs> Multiply uh, digits with four places, right? Yeah. I'm just kidding. But you should know what the property tax levy is, the gross levy. We just went through this. That's why I'm skipping, skipping ahead of, on all of this stuff because we went through this. Special assessment. Everybody know the difference between special assessment taxes and regular taxes? Okay, special assessment benefits what a certain group of people who have to pay for the improvements. And those improvements are done through the capital project. Licenses and permits, intergovernmental are grants, right? Fine, miscellaneous. Okay, here we go. You now need to know. Yeah, there we go. This is your standard budget for you. Don't forget it. When you record the budget, you, what are you doing? The debit, revenue, and credit appropriation. And the difference goes either way, whichever way it goes. If it's here, what does it mean? You're not spending all that you're receiving. So you're putting money into the fund balance. If it's on this side, what does it mean? You are taking money out of your rainy day fund. Okay? So this is what I wanted to show you. One entry which is important. And then encumbrance accounting. I think all of you now know already what that is that involves. My question to you is what if it were an encumbrance over a two year period? So December 31st, 2011, you put out a purchase order for $1,000. You got the item on January 2nd, 2013. When you placed the order, it was $1,000. When you got the item, it was $1,050. What's the amount of expenditure for 2013? <laughs> you ordered the item in 2011, it was $1,000. You got the item in 2012, it's 1050 
what's the amount of expenditure to be recognized in 2012? What's the extra fit? Okay. That's how, so you need to know over two years. Because the $1,000 that you did for last year is what? It belongs to that expenditure 2012. And then the expenditure for 2000, I mean 11, an expenditure for 2012 would be 50. Can you survive for another five minutes? All right, good. If it helps you, you can help that. I think you're beating this to death, measurement focus and based on technology. I don't think you'll ever forget this. Yeah. So it was the opposite, say, the upper Yeah, a good question. What do you think would be the right thing to do? You better. You, well, you'd have to get rid of that encumbrance for the entire amount, right? Yeah. And then what you'd have to do is adjust the expenditure for, yeah. But most people don't do that. For that number, they just, you know, yeah, they just leave it there. Yeah. But that's, that's, what, that's what we have. So why do we use a dual track approach, for instance? Because we'll go crazy. If you had two ledgers to keep, one on the modified accrual basis and one on the accrual basis, you'd go bonkers. So what do we do? The dual track accounting allows you to make these journal entries to recognize the impact of both the accrual basis and modified accrual basis. And in the real world, you keep it on the modified accrual basis. At the end of the year, you make the journal entry to bring it to, to the full accrual basis. Again, the journal entry, in this case, the opposite. Instead of being there, it's up here. That means they're doing what? Losing some of the money. What happens at the end of the year to the journal entry? You just reverse it. And that's what I was saying. A budgetary deficit does not necessarily indicate poor financial management. What's... Uh, Our target fund balance we should have. What do governments like to have? If you, if your budget was a million dollars, what do you think you should have in reserve at all times as a fund balance? It's about, in practice, they say 5%. Okay? 5% of your budget should be. Targeted instead. Now this says in the range of 10 to 25 percent, but you know what? It's not going to happen. The taxpayers are not going to like that. Encumbrance accounting. We talked about encumbrance accounting, right? And uh, why do we do this? And you can see this example. We'll just keep on going here because we. Uh, what's one item which doesn't require encumbrance? Payroll. One of the other items which people usually don't do an encumbrance for are what else? What else? Anything else? Utility bills. People like to do encumbrance accounts for discretionary. You know, if you have a utility budget that says, I'm going to spend half a million dollars in utility, People aren't going to transfer that money out of there to use it for something else because they know they don't have the money, the lights will be turned off. So, you know. so encumbrances usually are not reported for recurring expenditures such as payroll. And this is where we talk about the tax levy, which is billed to the taxpayer, how it's calculated. I'll go through this quickly because we just did this already. Let's see if we uh,
So what are tax anticipation notes? These are usually temporarily rich and provide cash flow when you're in need. This is the non-exchange transactions I wanted you to be aware of. Derived tax revenue, imposed non-exchange revenue, and government mandates. These are your grants, sales and income tax, and property tax. Derived because it's derived from the value. Non-exchange imposed because the government has the right to impose that on you and have a legal claim if you don't pay it. And government mandated and voluntarily, the next one, uh, voluntary non-exchange transaction, these are basically grants. So these two can be looked at as one category. That's the end of that. Wow. We have five more minutes. Any questions? You can do it. Hang in there for five more minutes. General capital assets. So what are the assets owned by a government called general capital assets? And that's where the conclusion comes. Capital assets are owned by proprietary funds. General capital assets are owned by the governmental entity. So you should, that's what that is. Land building improvement, also work of art and others which are not shown here. How are they financed? They're financed through bonds, grants, transfer, interfund transfer, gifts from individuals or organizations. That's how you uh, get hold of uh, these assets. Or special assessment bonds. Capital leases. Everybody remember how to deal with capital leases? The four rules on how to define a capital lease. And what happens? You value it based on what? The present value of the leasing. Minimum lease. Don't forget that. And general capital assets acquired from expenditures of the general fund, special revenue fund, and capital fund. Most of the general capital assets will be acquired from there. They are basically construction projects, right? So it would be basically arise from capital projects. But who eventually pays for it? The general fund. Who what? Taxation, right? Yeah. And this is the cost principle of how you value capital assets. Notice the word government wide level. Appreciated at what? The government wide level. Always at the government wide level. But it's debited to expenditures in the appropriate government. And then we talk about the last thing I want to talk about is, is modified approach. I really like this one. And these are the conditions that must be met. If you meet these conditions, do you have to depreciate the assets? No. No. That's why you have it, right? If you meet these conditions, you don't have to do what? Depreciation. Do you still have to capitalize the assets? Yes. No. But you don't have to do what? Depreciate. Depreciate the assets. So that's the modified approach.